Playing from the big blind is the topic today. So what are some of the things that influence your decisions when defending from the big blind? So someone's raised, you're in the big blind. How do you go about making your decisions? Here's six I came up with. We've got stack depth. How many big blinds do you have? How many big blinds does the opponent have? Opponent's VPIP. VPIP is a fancy way of saying voluntarily put in pot. How many hands is the opponent playing? And how are they playing them? That's important as well. Hand strength, stage of the tournament, uh, opponent's position. What we didn't see mentioned in chat would be limpers. So if there's a limp and then a raise, that muddies the waters. At the start of the tournament, what percentage of hands are you going to defend from the big blind versus the button who was raised 2.3 big blinds, 50 big blinds deep? Let's have a little look at this graphic here. As you can see, we are facing an open, 50 big blinds deep. The opponent's in the button, we're in the big blind, and these are the hands we defend. We don't just defend by calling. We defend by raising and jamming as well. 80% of hands. That's a lot of hands. You'll notice we're jamming 2.4% of hands. Remember, I'm with 50 big blinds deep. That's a little wild to me. These simulations are based on computer versus computer. How will our big blind defense frequency change when our opponent is in an earlier position? So in the last hand, in this hand, they've opened on the button. This is how we've defended. We call 63% of the time. We raise almost 15% of the time and jamming 2.4% of the time. How is this gonna change if we make the opponent an early position instead of the button? So the two and a half percent jamming has disappeared. The three betting has dropped by more than half and the calling was 63%, now it's 43%. No jamming, three betting less, calling less. Talking about less offsuit stuff, more suited stuff, playing connectors, not all of them. Look at that eight, nine off. Also, look here, we found a suited hand that gets folded. So let's compare the two. This is when our opponent's on the button. Three betting occurs a lot more. Pocket sixes and three betting for value. Nines, tens, jacks, all three betting for value. When it's uh, against early position, nines, tens, and jacks, they sometimes call. Some three betting in the dark orange there, some calling in the yellow there. And look at this. Who's been guilty of calling with a six offsuit? And this is without the ICM. There's no ICM pressure in this scenario. So what are the big differences between these two ranges? There's no jamming against early position because early position's range is too strong for that crazy play. Pocket three's jams because all these hands fold out with 50% equity and that's a big boon. When you're against early position, early position doesn't have all these hands. Offsuit gappers don't have the equity to call against early position. Look at these, nine, seven off, eight, six off, seven, five off. These do not have the equity to call against early position. They do against the button. Ace X gets folded against AP. Like a six offsuit, not good enough. Queen deuce off is good enough versus a button open. Queen deuce offsuit gets called when the button opens, but it doesn't of course when early position opens. In fact, queen nine offsuit doesn't get called against early position. Suit hands perform very well as a defend from the big blind, as a call from the big blind. So we are 50 big blinds deep in the examples we just talked about. How is this gonna change when the stacks are shallower? So in this next example, we're gonna be 20 big blinds deep. So this is against a button open, 20 big lines deep. We're in the big blind, button is open to 2.3x. We actually call more often when we are shallower stacked. The reverse implied odds disappear. If these hands get all in, 20 big blinds effective, they're doing so in good shape. Bear in mind, this is after we've seen a flop, they've connected well, the clash happens, we get all in. That's the difference. You capped at how much you can lose. I see lots of silly limping in games that are smaller than $55. In my experiences, they, uh, these ranges are not balanced. Players will limp and then jam when there's a raise, the old limp raise. They'll do it to some frequency. That move never died. That move never died. Because people will limp and then jam, we don't get to close the action in the big blind if there's a raiser. So if there's a limp and then a raise and we're in the big blind, we do not close the action. Not only that, if there's a limper and someone raises, they typically don't raise 2.3 big blinds. They'll typically raise three, four, five big blinds more. So how do we adjust our defending range? Limpers love suited hands. They love them. We see limpers wake up with like 9-4 suited, 9-5 suited. 6-3 suited, all sorts of nonsense. I think it's a bit of a disaster to use ace-five suited as a bluff here. If they have 6-3 of hearts, I do not want that hand to fold pre-flop if I have ace-five of hearts. I would use offsuit ace-x hands. 
to three bet bluff with instead. The reason I use an ace in my hand is because the ace is a blocker. If we have ace X, it's hard for the Razor and the Limba to have pocket aces because we've got one of the aces. And the, the offsuit ones don't have the benefit of going flush over flush. When ace X hands do run into some trouble, they do have an overcard. So if the Limba limp calls with pocket eights, we've got an overcard. That's not nothing. We do have to fold a little more because we don't close the action and the razor will almost always have used a bigger sizing. And the last thing is suited hands. We just talked about how if we have ace X suited, that's great because if they're limping king seven suited, we can dominate them flush over flush. When we're in the big blind with a suited hand against the limper, we have to show some caution because if we have five, six suited, we're probably going to call, right? We'll put two big blinds in with five, six suited and the limper will as well, almost certainly. If we end up with a flush draw or a flush, we have to bear in mind limpers love suited hands. We have to bear in mind that we could be flush over flushed. So maybe don't push the small flushes quite as hard when a limping range has a bunch of dominating suits in it.